So around 1800, you do not really have a very strong sense of a discipline and of a profession that defines itself as a discipline. Uh, so around 1800, uh, this is all in the making. Um, but there is a very powerful trend to move towards professionalization and to set up the boundaries of the discipline of history. Around 1900, this is arguably at its strongest. So this is a moment in time when historians know that they belong to a discipline, they know what the disciplinary boundaries are, they know how to define that discipline, and they set themselves up as uh, the only ones who, because of their professionalism, can speak authoritatively about the past. Uh, so this is a moment in time when historians feel that um, they have the power over the past. And in 2000, we arrive at a situation where historians have lost that self-confidence again, where there is uh, much more of a sense of crisis. How do we actually justify uh, our discipline? How do we maintain boundaries? Should we maintain boundaries? Who can speak about history? Isn't the very fact that we've seen a kind of democratization of history and of the sciences since the 1960s and 1970s, that there are now a plethora of voices uh, speaking about the past, uh, who all have some claim of speaking authoritatively about the past, and can we as historians still claim that we are the only ones who, because of some kind of training, because of some kind of methodology, uh, because of some kind of theory that we follow, um, have access to uh, the past as it actually happened. So in, in that sense we see a kind of dissolution uh, in 2000 of that kind of professional ethos that was forming around 1800. So in a way the profession has turned full circle. Well, historiography basically means historical writing. It means writing about the past. Uh, it means telling a story about things that have happened in the past. I think, for me, it has always been the present that fires my historical interest. So it's always been something in the present that nags me, that I find interesting. Um, so, for example, I've started work as a historian looking at labour history uh, and I come myself from a working class family which has strong connections to um, uh, social democratic politics. So it was that kind of personal history which led me also to look into the past. Um, and in a way, I guess behind that is the kind of idea that you can only understand the present by looking at the past, that what we are now, we are through a, a historical process, through a process of historical evolution. So if you want to understand the present, you have to look at the past. And the same with my topic, uh, historiography and national identity. I got interested in that with German reunification in 1990, because suddenly I saw how the interpretations of German national history were beginning to shift. And I was thinking, well, that's interesting that suddenly now historians are telling a different story about the national past than what they were telling uh, before reunification. So that got me then thinking, well, how is that relationship between national identity and historical writing? So it's always been something in the present that fired my interest in the past.